Hello and welcome to Pixel Bits, a tutorial series about creating pixel art. In this one we'll be going over a few tips and tricks that you can utilize in Asprite that I've learned over the years that I wish I knew when I started out. So let's get right into it. By pressing the settings button down by the timeline controls a menu will pop up where you can choose where to position the timeline and enable thumbnails, adjust their size or keep the cells as the default circles. You can also adjust the onion skinning settings in here. You can change the duration or FPS of your entire animation by going into frame, constant frame rate and in this pop-up window set the duration of all your frames. You can also highlight a specific set of frames and then right click and then press frame properties and in here adjust the selected frames duration. You can change the theme in Asprite by going into edit, preferences and then theme. If you highlight a theme you can go into the themes folder or you can click on download themes and it'll take you to a github page that lists different popular themes that you can download. Instead of using the default sRGB color space that allows you to use all the sRGB colors, you can go into Sprite, Color Mode, and then in here select Indexed. This will change the colors in your current file to only include colors from the currently active palette. Using this can help you to not accidentally add more colors to your sprite than intended. When converting artwork from sRGB into Indexed, you can go into Sprite, Color Mode, and then More Options. This will bring out a menu that allows you to enable different types of dithering in the conversion process as well as converting the image into grayscale with different settings. You can go into View, Preview or press F7 to open up a separate preview window that allows you to play your animation independently of your working on it. This allows you to see your changes in action as you do them. If you're working on multiple files and would like to have them both in the same view instead of switching back and forth, you can simply grab the name tag of one of the files and drop them into the workspace either on the right side or top and then you can also adjust the border between the two files. When you're in sprite canvas size and want to adjust your canvas you can just use simple math operations such as plus and minus, or multiply or divide instead of having to figure it out yourself. This also works when creating a new file. If you'd like to have multiple cells with the same image in them, such as a background, you can simply draw the image in one cell, then drag and select multiple frames on that layer and then right click and press link cells. This will create one large cell that stretches over multiple frames. This means that making a change on the cell will affect all the frames that it covers. You can segment your animation into subsections called tags by selecting a range of frames in the timeline and then right clicking and selecting new tag. This will bring up a menu where you can select the name, start and end point of the tag, the color and the animation direction. Having tags will allow you to loop and export specific areas of your animation. You can change the color of a layer tag by double clicking on the name of the layer and then clicking on the small hamburger menu and then color. This will only change the color of the name tag of the layer. If you would like to change the color of cells, you can highlight the area that you want to change color and then right click and then select cell properties. In here, you also press the hamburger menu and then color as with the layer name. Make sure to turn up the alpha of the color as it is defaulted to zero. If you would like to quickly loop a specific section of your animation, you can highlight the frames that you would like to loop and then right click and select set loop section or press F2. If you highlight another area and set the loop there, the loop tag will automatically move itself to the new position. If you would like to move your animation on the canvas, you can simply highlight all of the cells that you would like to move and then with a move tool or V, grab the parts that you want to move and then adjust their position. And after that, all the selected cells will have moved the same way. Alternatively, if you would only like to move a specific part of your animation, you can use the selection tool and select the area then highlight the cells you want to do the operation on and then move the selected area. You can create complicated custom brushes by drawing the pattern, then selecting it with a selection tool and then pressing Ctrl B. This will allow you to use your pattern as a custom brush. By going into View, Symmetry Options, you will enable this menu here. With this, you can add horizontal and vertical symmetry lines or both. And whatever operation you do on one side will be mirrored on the other side. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out my work that I post over on Twitter or one of my other videos. But other than that, I guess we're just going to say goodbye.